So Aaron Judge is 6'7". He's 280. He looks like what a home run guy should look like. Right? There's not a lot of ambiguity with Aaron Judge. He's big. He's stronger than everybody else. He looks like what a home run king should look like. Now, for the record, McGuire, Bonds, and Conseco, at times we thought they were clean, and they were for a while. But Aaron Judge feels different, and here's why. There are three things in life that they fall under this category. Believe what you want. And those three things to me are religion. I'm agnostic. If you think somebody upstairs pulling all the strings, I got no problem with it. But I'm agnostic. That's number one. NFTs, number two. I think it's a grift, a con. If you want to put your 401k in those puppies, knock yourself out, champ. Never spend a dollar with them. And number three, home run hitters. I believe two are clean indisputably. Ken Griffey Jr., Aaron Judge in the last 20 years. That's it. Everybody else is dirty or I got at least like 1% of suspicion. Maybe I'm naive. I never had that suspicion with Ken Griffey Jr. And I've never had it with... Aaron Judge, I will never invest in NFTs, and I don't think life is fate. I think it's based on your own decisions. Don't waste your breath or your tweets. I know who you're thinking of. I don't want to hear it. I've got 1% suspicion, at least for everybody else in the last 20 years. Not Ken Griffey Jr., not Aaron Judge. It's a great day in baseball. Because here's the thing about cheating. It not only affects the moment you cheat, but then for years and years, it stains leagues and other people, like Tim Donaghy. Now everybody's just like, well, Tim Donaghy did it. The whole league's on the take. No, Tim Donaghy had mobster friends. Not everybody in the NBA is on the take that wears the uh, officiating uniform. I know your team lost. It must be on the take. It's funny. You only say that when your team loses. Aaron Judge, it's a great day for baseball. Great kid. No ambiguity. Love what I saw. What a great kid. We are very lucky with our American sports stars. It can be Patrick Mahomes. It can be Aaron Judge. It can be a Mookie Betts. It can be a LeBron James. We're lucky. How would you act? If you had $100 million in your 20s, late 20s, early 30s. Guys are broke on Twitter. They're all jerks. We are so lucky in American sports that overwhelmingly 99% of our greatest, most gifted, most talented, and richest athletes, and Judge will be the last one of those very soon, are easy guys to root for. Good for Aaron Judge. Great day for baseball. So there are two quarterbacks in this league that I like appear to like way more than you do. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, who I see as a B, B minus quarterback, but I think he's got some moxie, some leadership stuff uh, that you can take him on the road against, you know, Aaron Rodgers and outplay Aaron Rodgers in the fourth quarter. You could play him against Patrick Mahomes. He's not as good as Patrick or Aaron, but he outplayed Patrick Mahomes for three quarters. He outplayed Aaron last year in the fourth quarter. I don't think he's great. I think he's a B to a B minus quarterback, but there is something about him. He's not Kirk Cousins. He doesn't shrink. He's just limited. There's a big difference. And the other one is Russell Wilson, who I view as like an A minus quarterback. He doesn't throw it like Mahomes or Herbert or, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's Josh Allen or Brady, but, but I think he's A minus. So those are the two that I like way more than you. But is it possible? I'm not saying probable. Is it possible that Nick Wright is right about him? Here's Nick. They are married to this guy who has given us no indications whatsoever over the last, forget 12 quarters, over the last 12 months, that he's still an above average NFL quarterback. But he's gonna be 34, he's undersized, he won't run the ball anymore, he doesn't seem that comfortable, and all of a sudden, Colin, doesn't it seem like maybe some of the offensive line troubles follow Russell Wilson around? Listen, seven years ago, he was unbelievable. But he's not that player anymore. So, yeah, they're going to be patient. He's going to be their quarterback this year and next year and the year after. But uh, I think you can rip up your AFC West Broncos 
uh, division winner ticket if you haven't already. Now, I do believe that hyper-mobile quarterbacks age very fast. Cam Newton, MVP, not as good, over. Big Ben declined very fast. A lot of hits moving around. Michael Vick. I do think hyper-mobile quarterbacks age faster than a Jared Goff sitting in the pocket slinging it or a Brady sitting in the pocket slinging it or a Stafford sitting in the pocket slinging it. Matt Ryan is gradually, gradually aging. So is it possible that Russell Wilson has, he's starting to fall off a cliff? Because that's the assertion by everybody else. So I, in my arguments, I tend to be unemotional. Probably a fault at some times, but I don't really care about the emotion of it. I tell people all the time, the answer is always easy to find. Just take the emotion out of it. So let's just find his three best three-year stretch as a pro. When is Russell Wilson's best three-year stretch as a pro? We looked it up this morning. 2018, 2019, 2020. <laughs> okay, that's his best three-year stretch. So I'm supposed to believe now that a quarterback that, A, has never been hit a lot, he doesn't get hit. He's not Cam or Big Ben. He's not that size. He doesn't get hit a lot and that is obsessed with his body and nutrition, plyometrics, and taking care of himself. Literally fell off a cliff from 18 months ago. <laughs> Even last year after the injury was good. So it comes down to this. 18 months ago, he just ended this unbelievable three-year stretch. He's not been hit a lot in the last 18 months. And, uh, I mean, think about this. I mean, just you start, you start, you, you want me to believe instead of what I do believe, you want me to believe 18 months removed from an obsessed body guy who doesn't get hit a lot has fallen off a cliff or that Nathaniel Hackett is completely over his skis as a head coach, that he got a job because he was Aaron Rodgers' buddy. By the way, Adam Gase got a job because he was Peyton Manning's buddy. It happens. These big star quarterbacks have major influence. Guys will call Peyton Manning. They'll call Aaron Rodgers. Hey, what do you think? Oh, I love him. And we found out later Aaron played darts with him, drank beer, and he made him laugh. <laughs> or whatever. Maybe it was bourbon. So that's why I defend him. This is not Big Ben who never took care of himself in the offseason, never really cared about the nutritional stuff. But that was not Big Ben. And he took a lot more hits because he was a bigger target. Or Cam Newton, who I don't know if he took care of himself in the offseason. But, I mean, Cam Newton had... A lot of injuries in his career, right? I mean, he once got hurt badly, his shoulder, I think it was, because he tackled somebody. I got a guy that never gets hit. 18 months ago, ended a great three-year stretch, and now I'm supposed to believe with a rookie head coach who can't figure out situational football, it's Russell's issue. I don't think it is. Nick Wright here is Nick Wrong. That's my guess. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.